What's your favorite knife to carry for work? How's it going, everybody? I'm Rochambeau, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And shout it out in the comment section below. What do you carry most frequently during your regular day job? I know that in the end, we all pretend that you know we're outdoorsmen. We camp out. Our address is next to a bunch of bushes and shrubs, maybe some pine trees, and we're feather sticking all day long. But for real, what do you like to carry at work? Today, we're checking out this guy. This is a CEO style flipper from a company called QYG MGS. And this model is called the GD22K. Now, if you haven't guessed yet, this is a company that needs our help because they are in the process of rebranding. So this model name, this company name, it's a placeholder. It's a placeholder for something better. And when they reached out to me and said, hey, Roll Shambo, would you like to check out one of our knives, make a couple videos? I said, absolutely. Because listen, I've got two requirements. Those requirements are, is it sharp? Is it shiny? If yes, I'm in. I can't promise that I'll give it a good review because my audience deserves honesty. They deserve context. I give the context in my grail or garbage ranking review, which I will be doing one on this knife in about two weeks. In the meantime, I want to share with you my first impressions of this budget offering that is quite frankly, very, very surprising. And if you don't know why, hang around till the end. And in the meantime, while you're watching the video, I want you to think of some ideas because I told them who better to ask for name suggestions than the knife community itself. They need our help. Let's come up with some ideas. Shout it out in the comments section below. And who knows if you come up with an idea that they end up using, we might just do a giveaway. Guys, let's check out the GD22K and see exactly why it's pleasantly surprising. So here we are checking out the GD22K. Now, don't judge a book by its cover is what they say. And in this case, I'm going to ask you not to judge this one by the current branding. And the reason for that is, again, they're changing that. So throughout the video, if you have any suggestions for any rebranding type names, uh, make sure to shout it out. Who knows? Yours might be the one that gets picked. And that's always pretty cool when that happens. Let's talk a little bit about the specs before we get started. Overall, we're looking at about eight and a half inches for the total length. It's got a three and a half inch blade and a five inch handle. This is a CEO style flipper Tonto. And this Tonto is, in my opinion, a beautiful blade shape. It's actually very slicey too. And I've got a piece of paper here that I'm willing to go ahead and prove it with. I have not touched up this blade. I have not checked it out at all. Uh, this is the fresh factory edge. And as you can see, it, it, it annihilates the paper. Now, most knives should be able to cut paper. That's not the point, but the point is just how cleanly and crisply it gets the job done. There's no rips, there's no tears. And for a Tanto blade, that's actually impressive because Tanto blades uh, specifically tend to be thicker behind the edge and they don't slice as well. I'm happy to report that that is not the case on this guy. More specs. This one is using D2 steel, which I know is not everyone's favorite, and it is ceramic ball bearings. Remember that, ceramic ball bearings. So D2 steel is not everyone's favorite, but it's right in line with the price point. You can currently pick this up on Amazon for about 42 bucks. And here's why I think that it's worth it. If you check out the design language on here, it has shadow box steel liners. And if you remember one of the things that I loved about the best Heckman Dundee, it was that the liner lock was crowned on that knife. And guess what? The liner lock is crowned on this knife as well. Did you see that action? That action is silky smooth. There's knives that I've held that cost four or five times this much that don't have an action that smooth. The blade is hidden completely in the handle scales and it's an open back design. Would I have preferred a backspacer? Yes. Would that have added to the weight? Yes. I understand why they didn't do that, uh, but it is something that I still wish they had done. Now, when we look on the inside, 
you'll notice that there are no there's no pocketing there's no cutouts for weight relief that's definitely something that they could have done to put this down in the you know 3.5 ounce range and that would have been perfect for the blade to handle ratio um, with that being said how's the detent well it's not the world's best detent but it's actually very crisp it's not super light and you can tell because this one is hard to fail I'm gonna lightly flip this and see if I can fail it no <laughs> <laughs> but it does have the action that you want out of a CEO style flipper. This is going to be one that is very thin as far as the uh, profile is concerned. It's not super th uh, thin as far as the, uh, the handle skills go though. And that's actually something that I really like. I like handle skills that have some thickness to them because they're easier to grip onto. Now, when we're talking about the ergonomics, this is usually when I talk about the pocket clip. This is a stamped pocket clip, but it's not the style that I hate where it goes, you know, from the top down to a ski jump and then a plateau. It's just the ski jump. And I've carried this for the last couple of days. and I'm happy to report that it fits in and out of the pocket with no problem. The only issue that I do have with the pocket clip is that these screws are not recessed. This clip is not recessed and it should be. There should be a cutout in the scales and those screws should be flathead screws that sink right in because depending upon the type of fabric that you're wearing, it is possible to catch that on those screws. And that's just a little bit annoying, but it's not generally an issue that I had. And overall, it's definitely not a deal breaker. Something else that I would have liked to have seen is a single sided captive pivot. In this case, it's not. Again, for 42 bucks, I'm okay letting that slide. Now, when we talk about the G10 handle scales, these are impressively contoured, and so it feels really good in the hand. There's no finger grooves or cutouts telling me what size my fingers need to be or where I need to place them. That's entirely up to me. So that means that if I wanna have this grip, I can do so. If I wanna flip it up to an ice pick grip or a defensive grip, I can do so. And I've got plenty of blade here to back up whatever grip I wanna put on it. Now there is no front finger cutout, but there is a sharpening choil, so that's nice too. One of the things that I wish that it had had was a little bit of jimping here at the top where my thumb would rest in a saber grip. That's missing. Some people debate that that's not even something that knives need. It is something that I like to see, however, so just keep that in mind. No jimping. Is that an issue for you? Let me know in the comment section down below. As far as everything else, I'm supremely surprised by the action of this knife. It's silky, it's glassy, it's ceramic ball bearings. And that's not usually something you find on a knife with more budget materials. You don't find that with G10 and D2, you find that with titanium and M390 because it helps make the knife feel more premium. And in this case, they didn't skimp. They could have gone with the 440 stainless ball bearings that we see on a lot of knives in this price range. And so I'm very surprised that they they went the extra mile to make sure that it had a premium feel, even if it, they weren't the most premium materials. At the end of the day, this is a great knife that you could use as a user because if you lose it or if you damage it, you can just go out and buy another one. Hell, for the cost of a sharpening, you could go out and buy another one. And they come nice and sharp from the factory. I'm just saying, it's affordable and it's attainable. But one of the things is, is that with this branding here on the blade, that billboarding is not attractive. Now, would it be better if they just had a single logo, like a Q with a circle around it? Yeah, I think so. But what bums me out is that I feel a lot of people might pass this up because of that billboarding. I would have rather have seen it on the pocket clip if they had to put it somewhere, or maybe even in the handle skills where you don't have to look at it all the time. Because no matter what you do, you're always going to see that logo. Does that affect how good this knife is? Absolutely not. At the $42 price range, it's hard to go wrong. It is possible with some knives, and I'm gonna go over how. When you buy a budget knife, there are a few things that you should always check out. If you wanna know how good the fit and finish is, check out the blade centering. When it's in the closed position, how centered is that blade? Check out the action. Is it smooth? Is it gritty? Is it free flowing? How is the detent? In this case, the action is really good because again, it's running on those ceramic bearings. Uh, it did come oiled from the factory, which is nice. They sent me this straight from their Amazon store. So I have a feeling that if, if you were to buy one, you would get it in the same condition. 
The thought to actually oil the pivot before sending it is a nice touch and it shows that they care about what their customers think of their products. I also really like the fact that these G10 handle skills have texturing and depth and it's not just one type of texturing, it goes from these broad striations to finer ones so that where the meat of your hand connects to the handle skills, you get a really good grip. There's not a whole lot that I can complain about at the $42 price point. And here's the thing, they do make more premium models. So if G10 and D2 isn't your thing and you want something with a deployment hole, titanium and M390, they've got that as well. And they've got those at two sun prices. In fact, I would venture to say that this is a brand that could compete with two sun as far as quality and fit and finish is concerned. I've got a two sun in the mail on the way. So I guess I'll find out for myself. Some minor improvements that I think they could make is on the billboarding on the blade. They could, of course, always improve the pocket clip. And something that they could have done to make this balance a bit better is some pocketing on the inside of those liners. Aside from that, the liner itself locks up very confidently at what I'm going to call about 40%. It's not late, it's not early, it locks up perfectly. Uh, the spine of the blade is not super thick, but there's also no rough edges. That's a knife's touch. And honestly, I find myself coming up with excuses to carry this knife because I absolutely love how addicting it is to f feel that action. That action, I, I find myself waiting quietly, trying to hear any grit, any noise whatsoever, and I can't. It's just so smooth. It's not a guillotine, but it does fall shut. And with a tiny bit of encouragement, you can get it to fall all the way into the handle skills, and that's really nice. Another touch which I think is worth mentioning is it has garaged stops. So if you look at the back of the blade here, you'll see that there is no stop pin. The stop pin is garaged in these handle skills, and that leaves for a really fluid design. All of these little things add up to one big thing, and that's value because when you look at other $42 knives, it's really easy to get something that's cheap, that's cheaply made with cheap materials, and it's just cheap, 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 cheap. And yet when I look at this one, for the $42 price point, I don't think cheap, I think affordable. I'm rather really impressed by this. The reason why I'm going hard in the paint for this knife is because I feel like it gets a bad rap due to the billboarding on the blade. And I asked them, I said, what does QYG MGS stand for? And they said, well, it's the initials of the company. And you know, this is a Chinese company that's trying to compete with the likes of Civivi and with Sencut and with Best Tech, and they've got stiff competition. My suggestion to them is no matter what you change the branding to, minimize the billboarding on the blade. Everything else you can keep. You can keep the, the garage stop pins. That's great. You can keep the crowned lock bar. That's phenomenal. You can keep this stamped pocket clip. I don't necessarily prefer it, but you know what? For the price point, it's not bad at all. I would recess those screws and I would recess the clip into the handle scales because it's thick enough to allow for that. Those are definitely change, small changes that can make a big difference. Overall, I'm really excited to do my grailer garbage on this thing because I think that it's going to surprise a lot of people. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have some rebranding advice for this company. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry, boo hoo, there's a button for you too. And if you want to see how this ranks in my grail or garbage review, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.